let's, uh, let's look at what we were talking about in the previous class before we get started with. Because for this application stuff, I want to cover the first part, grass with sparrow's tail, ward off, grass, sparrow's tail, ward off, roll back, press, push, look left, glance right, double press, horizontal split, hook, and single whip. Those eight to ten postures, depending on how you split them up, counting left side, right side, whatever, uh, that repeats eight times throughout our section. So for beginners, people that are learning the, the form, if they can learn, it's sort of like the chorus in a song. Every time we say, roll back, there's a press, there's a push, <clears throat> look left, glance right, double press, horizontal split, hook, single whip. So, to make things even more confusing, in the old days, that whole sequence was called Grasp the Sparrow's Tail. <laughs> We're not going to refer to it that way. We're just going to break them into individual postures. Before we do, Thomas, welcome back. Uh, I want to talk about what we had talked about, needle at the bottom of the seat. <clears throat> so, I do my big ward off, right? For This is uh, in the second section. After the Repulse the Monkey, we have uh, <clears throat> uh, the, the last repulse the monkey, we have Sherefe, diagonal flying, right, this. And let's say Thomas has grabbed my wrist, right? Doesn't matter which hand. When I make this loop, right, when I come around to go this way, it's a, this is fine, is when I bring this down, you see it's difficult for him to hold on to, but let's say he can still hold on, right, is this needle at the bottom of the seat. But let's say now he's, he's let go and grabbed with the same hand, right? He's now here. I've managed to shake him free. This is San Tombe. If he wants to come up, if he wants to hold on this way, I can go here to reach to press this. But let's do the same thing again. Uh, use the same hand, please. Thank you. When this comes around, I know it's going to break free, right? It's his geometry. It's not possible. So just just let it just let it relax. So now from here, I want to use this hand to cover to protect this. This is dangerous because he could fold his elbow and jam it into my head. So I'm going to step this way, get in here to press here, right? So if you step back for just a second, is here, now I've broken free of the grip. I can use this whole thing like a panel to protect myself to get inside. That's a San Tombe. In the form, this is not looking that dynamic, right? We have here, it comes up, and we step. But you know the meaning is after I've, the concept is after I've done the, what if he tries the other hand, right? What if he grabs with this hand, right? And I'm here, and I get to here. I might use San Tong Bay a, a different way. With this hand, I have to use the other, the, the sort of other technique, where I break free this. And with this, I would use a different San Tong Bay. <coughs> Questions, thoughts, comments. This is essentially, if, if, Thomas stands with his right hand out like this. This is San Tong Bay. You have an opponent. I want to move this out of the way and get to here. Very basic one move. But we can make it fancy in meditation. And we can talk about, we're going to talk about power generation for how to <coughs> get the G, right? That striking so that when, if he's here, when this comes up, oh, Sorry, did I get to you? Yeah. Okay, sorry. Yeah, that's right. effective. Sorry. It's, it's, and that's an easy one, right? So this is, imagine his shape is here, and this, if this is here. If, if, especially if this has power that's coming in this direction, if this is moving here, whoo, like a bow that goes right into the center. So Santon Bay, go ahead. Questions, feel free. Brian, I'm noticing something. Um, you in, almost seem to instinctively do something you used to talk about in class, which is you were covering his foot with your foot. Because yeah, that that's was... a that's a personal thing, and I don't recommend doing it uh, because an advanced practitioner. I like to step on people's toes. I like to get into their space because uh, I, I I have strong legs. I don't have a strong upper body. So I have a great kicking game. I like to use a lot of groundwork, footwork. His knee is here, his shin, his ankle, his toes. All of that's very sensitive. And most people aren't used to having their toes stepped on. So what's the feeling when I do this? It's uncomfortable. Yeah. And what's the first thing you want to do? It's pull off. And, and he can't. And while he's trying, that gives me the, the, the time to push So. Out. 
this this might sound like kind of a stupid question, but when I notice you doing that, and I think about how I would feel if someone stood on my foot, the question that comes to mind is, does that potentially enrage an opponent enough so that it actually overcomes the advantage of having his foot covered with your foot? Okay, that is the question sort of went, right? So the, the, as far as like enraging an opponent, if, if you want to talk about someone that's either uh, consumed, you can relax for a second if you want to have a seat. Uh, someone that's consumed some kind of chemical that gives them uh, some kind of power, they lose their mind and they're going berserk type of thing. Uh, that's, that's possible and we can talk about that. You can also trigger your own mind into that mode. I don't recommend it. And would stepping on their toes? Probably not. Because at the point where if you're boxing with someone, if you're fighting with somebody and you're stepping on their toes, they're already out for blood. You're already defending your life. You're already... It's, and, you're, not, you're out of personal safety and into self-defense. So at that point, it's kind of like, you know, if you want to poke someone right in the eye and they can't see out of their eye anymore, wouldn't that really upset them? Yes, you're defending yourself. You're doing any technique that you can to win. So that stepping on the foot, uh, we actually have that in the Tai Chi form, but it's meant more of like a, like a constraint and less of a, you're not putting, remember last week we said, uh, Yong Chen Fu said, don't hang your meat hooks on your opponent's meat because it's, it can rot and fall away. So don't put your weight on your opponent, right? The same thing, you, you don't, I don't wanna, if I put my foot there, it's to make him uncomfortable. I'm not actually putting my weight on it because Thomas is a big guy and if he draws his weight, he could take it with me, right? But that would get to the point where you say you don't recommend it because I assume the final piece of it is that if you're not doing that with precision, it actually creates more risk for you, the person doing the stepping on the foot, right? Because then they can take your balance away if you're not applying uh, yeah. it. Yeah, I mean, just think of it like, you know, earlier we had used the, the analogy of, of cars and uh, this is not about a manufacturing technique as far as like how the shape of something is or how the function is. This is more like sometimes when I do my turns, I use the emergency brake to get a little bit of extra. But for a beginner driver, they may wreck their car, right? Something like that. So it, this is like a fine tuning. And it's not for everyone. You may not like to be that comfortable with someone else to be that close to be stepping on their toes. Anyway, San Tong Bay. Let's continue. So from Neo at the bottom of the sea, this is San Tong Bay. It's, and, and the connection, let's actually show the connection to the next one. <clears throat> let's, if Thomas is, let's say he's punching with his right hand, and he wants to, in addition to this, he wants to punch all the way through me. He wants to pow, right, like this. So the idea is, if I'm down here, I'm dinking around, and he's going to step all the way, and maybe even keep moving, right? Something like this. He wants to clobber me. You're doing, you're doing fine. I'm just giving them some idea, right? Is as his power is coming in, right? This can be like one, can be connected to one thing, right? So if, or even if maybe he's not punching, because that requires like, you're going to have to be like Bruce Lee, like, oh, right? Get the thing out of the way. But maybe he's reaching, right? He just, he wants to choke me. He wants to, grab something I have, right, my sunglasses, my phone, and as he's reaching, the same thing right here is this circle that I'm talking about, is instead of just trying to move his arm in a line this way and keep him going, this wheel is like a big cog, like a big machine, so as the power is coming in, right, I can turn that wheel. It Does it expose me, right, here, right, just relax for just a little bit, here, could, can he reach his other hand over to hit my armpit? No, 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 right? And when, he t when I get to here to turn, to block, punch, and kick, I wish we had more light, <laughs> but okay. More clear. Yeah. Questions, Aaron has a go ahead. You know, uh, so yeah, you know, in terms of application, you know, I think the benefit to application is, is that then, you know, we can see the the tai chi symbol in the form right we can see the yin and the yang in different uh dimensions in three dimensions right and and each and if 
And if it's being done with Tai Chi, right, the force is being, um, it's not just fast and strong, right, just boxing, just hard form, but, but we're actually accomplishing the physics using the principles of Tai Chi, and then that application is a successful, then it always illuminates, right, what's going on in, inside the form, what, what's trying to be communicated inside the form. That's how I look at it. You can, and, go ahead. No, no, no. I mean, you, and, can reverse, and I just, you, you can reverse that as well. It's a Tai Chi, the yin and yang are replaceable, meaning uh, you can relax for a second, right? So if, so if I have an opponent here, like, like Thomas and I would like to do Kung Fu, and he says, oh, I was thinking about this thing the other day, he said it was San Tong Bay. What if instead of reaching for the ribs, I change that to get under his chin, and when I turn this circle, I'm pulling his wrist and doing like a, this is, this is your imagination can illuminate the, the, the form as opposed to the form illuminating the application, vice versa, right? You don't have to follow the technique that I show. You can use any posture for anything. Uh, this to me, for San Tong Bay, this makes the most sense. And when I talk about turning also, because in Bagua we have a lot of turning around the opponent to get the weird angle, right? Yeah, question. And, and my understanding is that, you know, Stand through the back is that the energy is going through through my through my shoulders, right? So from one hand to the other hand, and so what? So like the way the way TC taught the application, just one application, a random application is we're already down, we're down, and we're kind of vulnerable. Somebody punches in, we we connect, we connect and follow step in and then through the back up so instead of you're, you you kind of do more of an out he would go up into the either into the uh uh elbow or the underarm right so it could actually even be a strike done very quickly it could be a strike up then fan through and continue but it's the same. It's the same physics. It's the same circle. It's a circle going through your back, right? Right. So that's that's uh, San Tong Bay. Uh, I'm not going to try to translate the manner. But the idea is this: the 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 line of power goes from one middle finger all the way through the back to here. And I do. Uh, Aaron actually just reminded me of something. Is after needle at the bottom of the sea. This wheel of power, that the reason that I do it, like I said, a little bit differently than TC, but it's the same as TC, is because how many here remember doing the card dealer exercise, right? The Qigong where we pretend like we're standing in front of a U-shaped card table and you have to wipe and do this. And we say when we do this, you can make power at any point along that shape because I'm using my center to do. The same with this. So what Aaron was saying is, what I'm showing is my Santon Bay is more of like the Hollywood style, very pow to here. But that power can come up over to the top. Yes. Right? Yeah, it's, yeah. It's, so so that Charlotte, going back to your previous like why does one guy wave his arms this way? The, the power coming up through the back and out is through this circle, right? Because watch this elbow back here is here. <clears throat> here. Maybe there's somebody behind. So always turning, the power is going through the back. And by the way, this is, <clears throat> the Tai Chi form is very fascinating because as it expands, this, if, if we haven't talked about the power going through the back, by the second section, by the time the practitioner reaches this point, they should have San Tong Bay. Questions, thoughts, comments? <laughs> We're 22 minutes in and we are still on fans are back. It's actually good. I think there's okay. Yeah, let's, go. let's continue. So last week we talked about grasp the sparrow's tail <clears throat> and ward off, grasp the sparrow's tail and <clears throat> ward off. So, what's the solution to grasp a sparrow's tail? Grasp a sparrow's tail. We actually talked about that as well. Rolling hands. 
when somebody's reaching, if you turn and they reach again, and you turn and they reach again, guess what you're gonna have? Rolling hands, right? So uh, we'll come back to solutions to grasp the sparrow's tail. It's, it's a one-off at the beginning of the form. What do you do if somebody wards off? <clears throat> Today's class, we're gonna talk about rollback, possibly press, maybe push, but mostly ward off and roll back because they're working together, right? Like a yin yang. So uh, the idea is <clears throat> if, uh, do, you, do you know ward off, right? So if you're, we're both facing this direction, if you, uh, we'll have you do the left one. If you step your left foot forward and just expanding this circle like this, right? So, yeah. So if you're there, right, if you go back to just relaxing, <clears throat> And I step in this way, right? D just do a ward off. Just step in, right? This. What do I do if he's if he's warding off, right? If he wants to, is I can either fall down, right? Or if if I if I'm doing something and he steps in to ward off, I can start to roll back, right? And the reverse is true as well. So if he's, uh, let's say he's attacking me, and I do grasp the sparrow's tail and I step in to ward off, he doesn't know rollback. But if he just steps back a little bit, right, on his own, he can, I have to actually follow him, right? So as he, if he, if I punch, and he does grasp with spare toe, gets here, and then steps in and ward off, right, here, I can fall down or start to roll back, start to, start to lead him into the space. So what is rollback? If, let's say, Thomas is punching to my center. Let me see if I can get some more light. We're, the uh, clouds have set in outside, so we've lost some. We were getting some external light. Let's see if this will help the situation. So, <clears throat> so if he's, let's say I'm standing here minding my business, and, and Thomas punches towards my center, and I do grasp the sparrow's tail, and I step forward to ward off, right, like this, this, this thing. By the way, I did want to answer a question. Somebody asked last week, they said, what if the other person starts to step in, he wants to knee me in the groin, right? Can you do it? No. <laughs> nope. It's not, the angle doesn't allow it. And even if it does, what we had just talked about, watch my back, turning, <laughs> right? Being able to, to turn out of that. So, let's do, ha have a seat for just a second. So from the center, <clears throat> the idea of power is coming to the center, when I, when I roll back, I'm actually opening. So the idea is I'm stepping to my square step and my arms. Think of this like a, if you, if you see in the ocean, they have some kind of like fish swimming like a jellyfish or a squid or octopus that can move very fluidly. From the side, I want to step back. And the movement of me stepping back is creating the rest of, like my, like my clothes are silk. And they want to have that. So I'm getting out of the way. And then turning, we want to uh, imagine you're an octopus swimming in the ocean, some kind of jellyfish, and a big fish likes to try to get you. You don't want to stay in front of it. So as the power comes in, when I move back, I want to move out of the way. So ward off is the yang, right? It's the powerful like an explosion expanding. <clears throat> Rollback is the yin-yang 100% opposite. It's dissolving into nothing. It's the implosion that, that goes to literally negative, right? So yang, ultra positive, expanding, blowing the opponent or the obstacle out of the way. Rollback is the yin-yang opposite. And rollback uh, is a for martial arts technique, I have heard uh, a lot of martial artists say, you can use rollback for everything, for every attack. You disappear. They can't touch you. Some people may say it's running away, but you can turn that rollback into a, turn the defensive move into an offensive one. So, with that, right, if I'm standing here, let's, let's say, uh, I punch, and he does grasp the sparrow's tail, right? So coming in, catch, right? That's good. And he starts to step in to, to, to sorry, let's try this again. 
This, this is this, you're doing fine, right? So if I if I do this and you grasp a sparrow's tail catch, step your right foot. Yeah, that. Sorry, the other one. Yeah, that one. Now as he wards off, right? He's caught my wrist and he wants to reach in with this hand. As he goes to to reach in to ward off, right? To expand against me. <clears throat> I'm going to right. So if you expand, right? If I don't just flex like this. Right? I could just flex and try to allow him to do something, but I don't want to do that. So as he wards off, I want to change my base to get back so that I can start to lead him off of his base. By the way, this you may notice that all of this turns into, this is all going to turn into push hands, right? It's just like a chess game. At the beginning, here, all the chess pieces are set up, and once one person starts to move, that's the pawn, and then all the moves start to happen. But unlike chess, <clears throat> tai Chi, uh, we, we don't have to play, right? If all the pieces are set up, he's angry at me, and, and I don't want to uh, deal with something, I can just, I don't have to play the chess game. But, like we said earlier, if he punches, and I do grasp the sparrow's tail here, he still has another move in his chess game, right? So when he punches this side, I have to do hook, and now he's got another move. He's going to kick, or try to use his shoulder or his head mm -hmm. to come through the center, and I have to make another move. So you're going to continue to make moves until something happens. The best thing that you can be is balanced and stable, right? Have your body in the type of lightweight fluid state that can allow you to uh, get in and out of situations as you need. So, uh, roll back. Let's, let's do this. If Thomas is reaching with this hand towards my center, He's reaching in. The idea is first is avoid. And if he continues to reach, then I need to make contact. And if his power is still coming, I can advance, right? So this is one of the most basic, right? Is And this also, TC, like to do locking. So as his power is coming into my center, TC like to control the elbow and lock. But I grew up wrestling, grappling. I like to throw, right? I like to throw people around. I don't like to try to control them because my feeling is uh, the minute, if you don't have the authority to lock someone, the minute you stop locking them, they're going to fight you again. Unless you're police, bouncer, military patrol, somebody that has the authority to constrain someone into place. The minute that you unlock them, you have to resume the fight with potentially, as stated earlier, somebody that's now in a berserk mode because their elbow's either been broken or injured or something else. So I like to just get it, get them onto the ground as soon as I can to, to try to resolve it in a different way. Uh, so roll back. Power is coming to my center. I step back, connect to the power, and I'm turning my whole body in the form. Right? We're doing rollback perfectly. Remember we had talked about this sort of square grid that we have? So a perfect rollback is I've just done ward off him over the front. And I shift to the back and open to avoid. I turn this foot 90 degrees. My hands connect to the opponent. This foot turns 90 degrees and the power goes out to the side. Right? We want to still have tailbone head top, shoulders, chest, all of the correct Tai Chi principles in the thing. So roll back. One thing we're not going to do here, but I'm going to show, is for very aggressive, somebody likes to wrestle, somebody has a training with the wrestling, they want to take out your leg, right? It's called shooting in, scooping in, right? So if Thomas is here, right, and he has a dynamic stance, he's like, like a wrestler. I want to try to take out one of the legs of his table here, right here, or going in through this way to, to do some movement. And <clears throat> the idea is for, for rollback, if, if I don't, I'm not going to ask you to shoot in on my leg, right? Mm -hmm. So if you're standing there, the idea is somebody may try to tackle your leg this way. And if they can get a hold of your leg, they can tip you, right? You can relax. So the idea is the, the perfect, when we do practice rollback in the form, we have ward off, and we avoid, we make contact, and we advance. In a real life application, when, if you're fighting a wrestler, a grappler, somebody that likes to attack your legs, right? Rollback might look like this. 
I'm not, I don't have padding, so I'm not going to sprawl. But in wrestling, it's called a sprawl. As the other opponent tries to get under you to attack your foundation, right? See, that's why I don't want to pass. I'm running into stuff. That's a rollback, right? This is rollback in its, mo in its most simple. Ah, we're turning this way. It's a meditation in the park. But under attack, I may have to sprawl to prevent my opponent from attacking. <clears throat> so there's another rollback. I'm not going to go into it. But where, ward off, as my opponent comes in, I can roll over them. The Tai Chi expands infinitely. You can imagine many, many possibilities. Let's continue to press and push. We're going to combine all of this stuff into rolling hands, push hands type <coughs> uh, application. Anyone have questions about rollback before we continue? Right? Avoid, make contact, advance. So when you practice the form, grasp the sparrow's tail, ward off, grasp the sparrow's tail, ward off, roll back. You can do it all as one movement in your mind until you understand you can avoid, make contact, advance. What's the next one? G press. And the G power, the squeeze coming from the center, and the feet aren't as important. Sometimes when we think about punching, we think about planting that foot down there so that we can get the power from that foot out to here. But the G power is different. This is where we start to analyze the inside of the power. This punch that I had talked about for Taiji might be more of a press. The G power is like this. <coughs> You see, my feet aren't connected to the ground. I don't have to be connected to the ground to punch. In fact, I can deliver uh, a lot, my whole body power. I'm looking for something to punch besides, besides poor Thomas over here. Here, take, if you take this stick, right, and you just stand here and you just hold the stick right here where it's at. Imagine that's my target, that's my center line. Instead of just using my arm or maybe even my waist, to turn like this, I can use my whole body, right? Send as if my whole body is flying behind that power. But we don't want to, this is, thank you, this is not, uh, we're not doing some fantastic Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, flying punches, right? We could do that potentially, and then it's, that's in other Kung Fu forms. The concept for G is, <laughs> The shortwave shocking power. We don't need to have a big space for that. So roll back, press. In the form, it just looks like when I roll back, I'm just joining my palms and pressing forward this way. You can do that when you're practicing outside. You don't want your neighbors seeing you do crazy kung fu because they're going to say, what, what is this guy doing? Right? Instead, you're practicing. But on the inside, when you press like this, you're pressing with a power. Why do we use a hand, right? <clears throat> let's, let's look if we have an opponent. So by the way, the name for rollback in the text forms sometimes translated, I think in, in our PDFs, it says rollback to trap in. Remember, that's the locking. So if Thomas is attacking my center here with this hand, when I do the rollback, I can turn to trap this way, right? constraining his arm. If he goes to move away, now he says, oh, I'm locked, and I, he wants to move away, I can add to his move away and send, send, knock him over, right? So this rollback press is very effective. Let's actually do this again. Let's change sides so they can see it from another angle. If he's using his right hand and he's going to the center and I uh, oh, wait, sorry, I'm just doing a rollback, right? So as his power, I'm standing here minding my business. As his power comes in, when I roll back to trap him this way, now he may say, oh, I'm being lured in this direction, and he may want to start sending his power that way. And when he does, as he starts going that way, I can shock, or we'll get into the next one, which is push, right, a long-distance wave. 
questions, thoughts, comments. Uh, I want to talk about the hand thing, so stay here for just one second. Let's say there's two opponents, and it's crowded. I'm in a uh, tavern, a bar, or something, and there's a bar fight, and I need to get out, right? If power is here, right, and, and let's say there's two opponents, I have done rollback to one and dispatched that person to the ground, and now I know there's another opponent over here, right? This first hand turning is both a sensor and a block. Right? So if his hands are up, I'm looking at the screen so I can't see what he's doing. Right? So here, I can tell, even before I've looked at him, I can be using this to feel, okay, I know his arms are here. Right? Or if, wherever my hand lands on him, I don't need to look. I can feel his forearms and his wrist. Right? Even if we put a, put a cover, you can feel where you're at. And now when I turn back, I know if I press here, I'm just going to press his hands. So I need to press here to get to something vital, right? So this first hand, when it's turning back, is a cover, right? Like if, we, if we're boxers in a ring, we want to protect the equipment, right? This is all very valuable. This is your computer, right? You don't throw your computer downstairs. We don't go into MMA match, right? So you're protecting this stuff is here. <clears throat> so this sensor is when I'm turning is a little bit like this, right? Why don't we have it up? Is we're pressing to the center. So this, why is this hand here to press? Is sensing first, and then this other hand can come in behind it. The other thing too, is that we can use a buffer, right? So let's do this, turn sideways this way, right? Is if I put my hand, if I just press with my hand like this, right, one hand, is, is there's a direct power into his arm. Whereas if I use this other buffer, it's nicer. It's considered softer. You're still gonna put a hammer strike into the person if it's their ribs, right? You felt that? Mm -hmm. Not on your arm, but imagine that your ribs are a vital organ. You can oh, relax yeah. for a second, right? Mm -hmm. So remember, Tai Chi is uh, evolved. We're, we, tai Chi is considered in the Kung Fu a gentleman's boxing art. And uh, all of these things that we're talking about Pong, Li, Ji, An. These are considered the powers, right? The, the sort of ways that Qi is manifest into Jing. So let's talk about that for a second. Inside you have your Shen. In the Mandarin it's called your Shen, your spirit. And when your spirit uh, is, becomes uh, uh, energized, right? When you have a high level spirit, it creates chi in your body, right? So your spirit makes the energy, the chi. And then when your chi becomes fulfilled, right? The chi becomes uh, so much that it takes on a form. That's called a jing. So jing is anything that your body produces that's tangible, that's not a waste, right? Uh, your mucus is a liner. Your saliva helps you digest. Your tears lubricate your eyes. Your earwax protects and does all different types of things. These, uh, besides uh, urine and feces, waste products, these are considered to be vital. So we don't want to spit. Spitting your saliva out in the ground is wasting literally your spirit, made the energy, which made the jing, which made the thing, right? So, so and in the... The jing is the expression. When qi goes to the outside, it's expressed as jing. So you can feel your, your own qi, but you can never feel your own jing. Someone else can feel your jing, but they can't, he can't feel my qi. He can only feel the representation. And in the martial arts in Tai Chi, when that qi is represented as a strike, that's called fa jing. Fa Jing is expression of Qi. So Tai Chi has eight different Fa Jing, eight different expressions of Qi. Ward off is the, the full Yang, the maximum outward going one. And roll back is the full Yin, the maximum inward going one. These other six in between uh, are are some combination of yin and yang. So the next two that we talk about after we have ward off, roll back, are qi, which is press, and an, which is push. <clears throat>
Anyone have questions so far to date with this? Let's actually look at if we do press and push, come back, press, push, come back, press. You can combine, you can just do pushes, right? If you just like to sit around and make a circle. So these exercises, right, if Thomas is, is here, press requires us to be, if we like to remember our square shape, our hands, we don't want to reach too far out of our, our box. So press requires us to be closer. And again, it's a short wave movement. On is a long wave movement. We haven't talked about this one yet. So if uh, Thomas is there and he's, let's say he's minding his own business and I want to want to push, right? Is the idea is my feet and my hands are connected, but everything in between is relaxed. It's the the sort of yin yang opposite of push, which has my center or uh, press, which has my center solid. So pressing this way, my feet on the ground, my hands on Thomas. What happens in between is all like a big spring, right? To get between this point and here. Uh, <clears throat> I will put up trigrams later. <clears throat> and these movements, by the way, so uh, I won't do them with my fingers. They cancel each other out the same way ward off and roll back do. So if uh, Thomas wants to ward off against me, expand his power against me, right? Any way you want, like this, just expanding, ward off, right? Like, um, this, right? Yeah, that's okay, right? This, I can roll back. And the same way, if, if he wants to roll back, if my power is coming in and he wants to, like, draw me in, like, pull me in this way, I can switch to ward off. Right. So as he, let's say, uh, let's say I'm reaching and he wants to roll back. Right. So he wants to grab my arm and pull me in. Right. So as I step forward, he's going to grab and pull. Right. If I continue, he's just going to pull me this way. But I can switch from being G, where my feet aren't connected, and he catches and starts to pull, to on, where I now, as my power starts to go that way, I can expand and either cause him to. To, to go off to the side, or that breaking power may also cause him to, to have a different reaction, lose his balance or be offset. Is, that, is it more clear? So now how did G and on work together? If I'm getting close to him and I want to punch, right? This, by the way, in, in, when we do uh, bon lan shui, corner, parry, punch, that punch is the same expression as G, the squeeze, right? So, if, I get, if I'm getting close to him to punch, right, I'm going to use a short wave power. He wants to defeat it by using a long wave power to push me away. So as I want to come in to punch short wave, right, I want to deliver this, but I have to get close enough to deliver the short wave power. As he senses my structure getting closer to him, he can just simply push me all the way across the room. Right? Is connect to the person and then shove them before they can deliver that short wave power. And this, by the way, is why when we have uh, in, in the end launch way, is here, if we're boxing, and it's here, I need to move this stuff out of the way for the short wave power here. These movements can be very small. So the idea is, if I'm coming in to give him a punch here, he can simply connect and, and press, push, right? And if you push, you need to get some, right? So get a triangular step. That's it, right? Yeah, and then just just forget anything Forget anything fancy. Imagine you want to push me into that wall, right, in the closet. That's just your arms. Watch this, all right? Let's switch. I'll do it with my... Let's, okay. let's switch, right? So my feet are here. If As, as he's sort of coming in to get the, the power, right, is we like a wave, before, the, before they can drop the anchor, big wave comes to push them away. Mm -hmm. And the reverse is also true. Let's, say, let's switch again, He's, he wants to push me, right? I'm standing here minding my own business, and he comes in when his hands are on me, pop! Break the wave before it happens. So these, these two, G and on, working together. As the person gets in to punch, the wave swells up and pushes them away. Or as the wave comes in, the punch 
breaks the wave before it can make the impact. This is a matter of extreme timing. This is, by the way, when you see guys out in the park playing rolling hands, you go, man, that guy's 80 years old. He must have been playing rolling hands forever. Because you can pick up some super nuance, some very fine tuning about what's happening for the other person's balance inside their body, catch moments of uh, where the energy is missing and, and push them. Have, have a seat for a second. Let's look at the time. We have, we have about 10 minutes. Anyone have questions, thoughts? comments on rollback. <clears throat> we had talked about the sprawl, right, which is like the most extreme rollback. And then press, shortwave power on long wave power. G, by the way, one, one other thing. This term G in, in Chinese doesn't translate to press. It translates actually to squeeze. So don't squeeze the Charmin. But squeeze can also be used as, a, as an attack for what's, what uh, Yong Ying Ming refers to as a cavity press, right? So if, if Thomas is here, I, I, I don't really understand this one, but I'll give you some idea for the squeeze. Is Let's say he's reached something, and I've managed to get around him to this point here, is I can take his lung or his liver, some organ, his rib cage, and squeeze it. That is the feeling of squeeze, G. But we, use, I like to. I, I'm a striker. I like to make the hits. But uh, Dr. Yang talking about uh, if you have a person. Let's step this way a little bit. I want to see it turn. How we can show this on the camera, right? But imagine I'm not just using his shoulder, but I have somewhere here like a vital organ, and I have either one hand as the brace and the other hand pressing, or both hands clapping in at the same time, right? This kind of chee, chee, squeeze. You can really hurt somebody with this kind of squeezing. Look up Dr. Yang in his Taiji books. He talks about using the squeeze. I don't think our form uses squeeze in this way, but I may have to come back and uh, look, at, look at some applications of things. And push. One last thing about the push is imagine that your body is a slinky. How many here do not know what a slinky is? Like a big spring that is like a toy spring for children. They make them all rainbow colored and LEDs nowadays. So the slinky, when you watch it go down the stairs, you have one end and the other end. And the one end goes, and then the other end goes, and then the other end goes. For push, like a slinky, one end is connected and the other end is connected. Everything in between those two ends is relaxed. So, because I want to make a connection, imagine I'm some type of sea anemone or, or like undersea tube worm that connects to the ground and pushes from here, right? So if, if Thomas is closer, the idea is that this is solid, right? Whatever I'm connected to, I want you to see my hands, is connected to here. And my feet are connected here. But everything in between, I can get way here to push in with my elbows, I can come over this way. So the idea is you're rooted and you're connected to something here, but everything else in between can push it. And you want to use your whole body to push. What is the Tai Chi way? If you have a square step, your tailbone, either from, if you want to push something down, you come under and push it down, or if you want to push something up, you come from underneath and push something up. <clears throat> Questions, thoughts, comments, ideas. One thing, uh, let's talk about one other thing from the form is if if I'm doing the press, right? So so uh, hang tight for one second, let me think about this. Roll back. When I go back to press, <clears throat> if Thomas grabs my wrists. Do more natural. There you go. Right. So if he grabs before I can press, he does a grab. Uh, this is. I'm turn. I can just turn my hands. Right. It'll be very difficult for him in a second here to hold on. Mm -hmm. And I turn them over the top to press. So what? T, the way that TC taught this in the form. There's sort of two different ways to do this. If I press and he grabs, just like you did a second. That's perfect. Right. Is one thing that TC taught is. Just like Bang Lan Shui, if I turn my hands in and under, he can't hang on. Nope. 
and then I can press his hands out of the way, right? So for if you watch TC's video, he will turn his hands in. He's turning them down. I when I do it, I like a bagua, so I turn the other way. So this is if it's gripped right here. This yeah, you're fine. It's, everything's fine, right? Is there's two different ways to do this. I can either turn this way, go down and come over to press, or come up to press from underneath here, right? And and by the way, when you practice this stuff, be very sensitive to your it's like if you're working with a martial arts par partner, if they're if he's gripping to hold on, I can really hurt his fingers, right? So this we don't want to have this happening. Uh, you want to protect your your joints for a long time. Uh, if you <clears throat> if you are working with somebody and you accidentally hit them and there's some pain, you should stop to work work the chi, work the 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 uh, injury. So. Anyone have questions, thoughts, comments? After the press, we can press down and come over the top, or press, come over the top, and press in. Aaron, I knew you'd remember that last part, right? The, and you can see it from his videos where he, after he pressed, turning. And this gets into push hands, twist saw theory. So if, if I press and he grabs my wrists, right, I don't just want to disconnect because now he could just pop just the first movement, right, is here. So when I do this, if I do this, when I when I disconnect, instead of disconnecting this way, right, sorry, is I want to disconnect and recircle so that I'm on top. So after I press, I need to either get my hands on top from outside or press from the inside, right, either inside or outside. You can mess with this if you have your... Uh, Friends, family, uh, some some person that's willing, you can, and also if you're, you can cultivate your mind. I, I practice Tai Chi uh, hundreds of times, practicing with the idea. Okay, what if they're holding and I come this way? Does that open my center? I have to turn something. You can practice all that uh, internally. Questions, thoughts, comments. We have about five minutes. In 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 the push hands. You know, we could also you could also use it as a feint. You you can actually yeah, so maybe it's breaking the rules. I don't know, but you you can push down to make them think a push is coming, which causes them to to move right. You can kind of force them to pick a direction by by applying a push on them, and then after the movement comes, you can take advantage of of their reaction. That's which. That's yeah. we're, we're actually that's going to be schwang on, and maybe we should cover that in this class in these next few minutes. What what Aaron is talking about is after we have press, push, we have look left, glance right, and double press. Double press is up, down, up. So if Thomas is here, right, and he wants to, he doesn't want to get pushed over by me. So he takes a good route, right, and when I press. I want to push him up off the ground to knock him over, right? So when I push up, he's going to hunker down, right, in, in that direction. And as he hunkers down, I say, okay, fine, you want to push down? I'll push you down. And then what's he going to do? He's going to hunker back up. And as he hunkers up, very easy to knock him over. Mm -hmm. And this, this is a, a Tai Chi idea. We're, we can probably talk more about this next week as well because this works with left, right, left as well. So let's say mm -hmm. I say, Thomas, come this way. And he says, no, I don't want to go that way, right? He says, I want to go that way. And I'm pushing him. And, and I say, okay, fine, go that way. And then he starts resisting. And he starts pushing back this way. And I say, oh, okay, you want to resist? And then I fall, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. So huh. left, right, left, Poor up, down, up. Uh, and this gets weird. This can be right hand upward spiral corkscrew. This can be left hand downward spiral corkscrew. It can change. The idea is shift, shift, shift. Let them fight you. Let them fight you. Go the direction they're going. Put, give and them. even look right, glance left, it could theoretically come out of that dynamic that you just described. It's a little different because up down, uh, this one is forward and the other is one is more yang and the other is more yin. But we have about three minutes left, so let's do something. Allow your feet to touch. <clears throat> Bring your head top up to the highest point. Actually, Thomas, why don't you join us for this? <clears throat> Just pick a space, pull your head top up, 
<clears throat> return to Tai Chi harmony. So again, for people watching the application class, this is this is not a religious or spiritual thing. You can turn it into that if you want. Tai Chi is about structure. And then breathing deep, move your mind into your center. Take a second to smile to yourself. Take a second to internally have gratitude for your mind capable of figuring this out, your body capable of doing it, your energy capable of improving you, improving itself. One long last deep breath. <clears throat> That's it. Next week we'll do, we'll talk more about what we had just talked about, G and push and then what's next? Aaron just mentioned look left, <coughs> glance right, double press, horizontal split and so forth. So have a great weekend. Sounds good. See you guys. All right. Text with questions.